Hello, I'm Ken Johnson, and welcome to the New Hope Reads Ministry. We hope you will visit daily as we read from the Chronological Bible. May our time spent together in God's Word be a blessing to us all as God reveals Himself and His nature, as He opens our minds, and as He prepares our hearts for our good and His service. Again, thank you for joining us. May 25th, Solomon's Many Achievements, 2 Chronicles 8, 1 through 18, 950 BC. It took Solomon 20 years to build the Lord's temple and his own royal palace. At the end of that time, Solomon turned his attention to the rebuilding of the towns that King Hiram had given him, and he settled Israelites in them. Solomon also fought against the town of Hamath Zobah and conquered it. He rebuilt Tadmor in the wilderness and built towns in the region of Hamath as supply centers. He fortified the towns of Upper Beth Horon and Lower Beth Horon, rebuilding their walls and installing barred gates. He also rebuilt Baloth and other supply centers and constructed towns where his chariots and horses could be stationed. He built everything he desired in Jerusalem and Lebanon and throughout his entire realm. There were still some people living in the land who were not Israelites, including the Hittites, Amorites, Perizzites, Hivites, and Jebusites. These were descendants of the nations whom the people of Israel had not destroyed. So Solomon conscripted them for his labor force, and they serve as forced laborers to this day. But Solomon did not conscript, conscript any of the Israelites for his labor force. Instead, he assigned them to serve as fighting men, officers in his army, commanders of his chariots and charioteers. King Solomon appointed 250 of them to supervise the people. Solomon moved his wife, Pharaoh's daughter, from the city of David to the new palace he had built for her. He said, My wife must not live in King da David's palace, for the ark of the Lord has been there, and it is holy ground. Then Solomon presented burnt offerings to the Lord on the altar he had built for him in front of the entry room of the temple. He offered the sacrifices for the Sabbaths, the new moon festivals, and the three annual festivals, the Passover celebration, the festival of harvest, and the festival of shelters, as Moses had commanded. In assigning the priests to their duties, Solomon followed the regulations of his father David. He also assigned the Levites to lead the people in praise and to assist the priests in their daily duties. And he assigned the gatekeepers to their gates by their divisions, following the commands of David, the man of God. Solomon did not deviate in any way from David's commands concerning the priests and Levites and the treasuries. So Solomon made sure that all the work related to building the temple of the Lord was carry out, carried out from the day its foundation was laid to the day of its completion. Later, Solomon went to Ezion Geber and Elath, ports along the shore of the Red Sea in the land of Edom. Hiram sent him ships commanded by his own officers and manned by experienced crews of sailors. These ships sailed to Ophir with Solomon's men and brought back to Solomon almost 17 tons of gold. 1 Kings 9, 15 through 28. This is the account of the forced labor that King Solomon conscripted to build the Lord's temple, the royal palace, the supporting terraces, the wall of Jerusalem, and the cities of Hazor, Megiddo, and Gezer. Pharaoh, the king of Egypt, had attacked and captured Gezer, killing the Canaanite population and burning it down. He gave the city to his daughter as a wedding gift when she married Solomon. So Solomon rebuilt the city of Gezer. He also built up the towns of Lower Beth Haran, Baaloth, and Tamar, in the wilderness within his land. He built towns as supply centers and constructed towns where his chariots and horses could be stationed. He built everything he desired in Jerusalem and Lebanon and throughout the entire realm. There were still some people in, living in the land who were not Israelites, including Amorites, Hittites, 
Perizzites, Hivites, and Jebusites. These were descendants of the nations whom the people of Israel had not completely destroyed. So Solomon conscripted them as slaves, and they serve as forced laborers to this day. But Solomon did not conscript any of the Israelites for forced labor. Instead, he assigned them to serve as fighting men, government officials, officers, and captains in his army, commanders of his chariots and charioteers. Solomon appointed 550 of them to supervise the people working on his various projects. Solomon moved his wife, Pharaoh's daughter, from the city of David to the new palace he had built for her. Then he constructed the supporting terraces. Three times each year, Solomon presented burnt offerings and peace offerings on the altar he had built for the Lord. He also burned incense to the Lord, and so he finished the work of building the temple. King Solomon also built a fleet of ships at Ezion Geber, a port near Elath in the land of Edom, along the shore of the Red Sea. Hiram sent experienced crews of sailors to sail the ships with Solomon's men. They sailed to Ophir and brought back to Solomon some 16 tons of gold. The Queen of Sheba's Visit 1 Kings 10, 1 through 13 When the Queen of Sheba heard of Solomon's fame, which brought honor to the name of the Lord, she came to test him with hard questions. She arrived in Jerusalem with a large group of attendants and a great caravan of camels loaded with spices, large quantities of gold, and precious jewels. When she met with Solomon, she talked with him about everything she had on her mind. Solomon had answers for all of her questions. Nothing was too hard for the king to explain to her. When the Queen of Sheba realized how very wise Solomon was, and when she saw the palace he had built, she was overwhelmed. She was also amazed at the food on his tables, the organization of his officials and their splendid clothing, the cupbearers, and the burnt offering Solomon made at the temple of the Lord. She exclaimed to the king, Everything I heard in my country about your achievements and wisdom is true. I didn't believe what was said until I arrived here and saw it with my own eyes. In fact, I had not heard the half of it. Your wisdom and prosperity are far beyond what I was told. How happy your people must be. What a privilege for your officials to stand here day after day listening to your wisdom. Praise the Lord your God who delights in you and has placed you on the throne of Israel. Because of the Lord's eternal love for Israel, he has made you king so you can rule with justice and righteousness. Then she gave the king a gift of 9,000 pounds of gold, great quantities of spices and precious jewels. Never again were so many spices brought in as those the Queen of Sheba gave to King Solomon. In addition, Hiram's ships brought gold from Ophir, and they also brought rich cargoes of red sandalwood and precious jewels. The king used the sandalwood to make railings for the temple of the Lord and the royal palace, and to construct lyres and harps for the musicians. Never before or since has there been such a supply of sandalwood. King Solomon gave the Queen of Sheba whatever she asked for, besides all the cost customary gifts he had so generously given. Then she and all of her attendants returned to their own land. Second Chronicles 9, 1-12 When the Queen of Sheba heard of Solomon's fame, she came to Jerusalem to test him with hard questions. She arrived with a large group of attendants and a great caravan of camels loaded with spices, large quantities of gold, and precious jewels. When she met with Solomon, she talked with him about everything she had on her mind. Solomon had answers for all of her questions. Nothing was too hard for him to explain to her. When the Queen of Sheba realized how wise Solomon was, and when she saw the palace he had built, she was overwhelmed. She was also amazed at the food on his tables and the organization of his officials and their splendid clothing. The cupbearers and their robes and the burnt offering Solomon made at the temple of the Lord. She exclaimed to the king, Everything I heard in my country about your achievements and wisdom is true. I didn't believe what was said until I arrived here and saw it with my own eyes. In fact, I had not heard the half of your great wisdom. It's far beyond what I was told.
How happy your people must be. What a privilege for your officials to stand here day after day, listening to your wisdom. Praise the Lord your God who delights in you and has placed you on the throne as king to rule for him. Because God loves Israel and desires this kingdom to last forever, he has made you king over them so you can rule with justice and righteousness. Then she gave the king a gift of 9,000 pounds of gold, great quantities of spices and precious jewels. Never before had there been spices as fine as those the queen of Sheba gave to King Solomon. In addition, the crews of Hiram and Solomon brought gold from Ophir, and they also brought red sandalwood and precious jewels. The king used the sandalwood to make steps for the temple of the Lord and the royal palace and to construct lyres and harps for the musicians. Never before had such beautiful things been seen in Judah. King Solomon gave the queen of Sheba whatever she asked for, gifts of greater value than the gifts she had given him. Then she and all her attendants returned to their own land. Solomon's Wealth and Splendor, 1 Kings 10, 14 through 29. Each year, Solomon received about 25 tons of gold. This did not include the additional revenue he received from merchants and traders, all the kings of Arabia and the governors of the land. King Solomon made 200 large shields of hammered gold, each weighing more than 15 pounds. He also made 300 smaller shields of hammered gold, each weighing nearly four pounds. The king placed these shields in the palace of the forest of Lebanon. Then the king made a huge throne decorated with ivory and overlaid with fine gold. The throne had six steps and a rounded back. There were armrests on both sides of the seat and the figure of a lion stood on each side of the throne. There were also 12 other lions, one standing on each end of the six steps. No other throne in all the world could be compared with it. All of King Solomon's drinking cups were solid gold, as were all the utensils in the palace of the forest of Lebanon. They were not made of silver, for silver was considered worthless in Solomon's day. The king had a fleet of trading ships of Tarshish that sailed with Hiram's fleet. Once every three years, the ships returned, loaded with gold, silver, ivory, apes, and peacocks. So King Solomon became richer and wiser than any other king on earth. People from every nation came to consult him and hear the wisdom God had given him. Year after year, everyone who visited brought him gifts of silver and gold, clothing, weapons, spices, horses, and mules. Solomon built up a huge force of chariots and horses. He had 1,400 chariots and 12,000 horses. He stationed some of them in the chariot cities and some near him in Jerusalem. The king made silver as plentiful in Jerusalem as stone, and valuable cedar timber was as common as the sycamore fig trees that grow in the foothills of Judah. Solomon's horses were imported from Egypt and from Cilicia. The king's traders acquired them from Cilicia at the standard price. At that time, chariots from Egypt could be purchased for 600 pieces of silver and horses for 150 pieces of silver. They were then exported to the kings of the Hittites and the kings of Aram. Second Chronicles 9, 13 through 28. Each year, Solomon received about 25 tons of gold. This did not include the additional revenue he received from merchants and traders. All the kings of Arabia and the governors of the provinces also brought gold and silver to Solomon. King Solomon made 200 large shields of hammered gold, each weighing more than 15 pounds. He also made 300 smaller shields of hammered gold, each weighing more than seven and a half pounds. The king placed these shields in the palace of the forest of Lebanon. Then the king made a huge throne decorated with ivory and overlaid with pure gold. The throne had six steps with a footstool of gold. There were armrests on both sides of the seat, and the figure of a lion stood on each side of the throne. There were also twelve other lions, one standing on each end of the six steps. No other throne in all the world could be compared with it. 
All of King Solomon's drinking cups were solid gold, as were all the utensils in the palace of the forest of Lebanon. They were not made of silver, for silver was considered worthless in Solomon's day. The king had a fleet of trading ships of Tarshish, manned by the sailors sent by Hiram. Once every three years, the ships returned loaded with gold, silver, ivory, apes, and peacocks. So King Solomon became richer and wiser than any other king on earth. Kings from every nation came to consult him and to hear the wisdom of wisdom God had given him. Year after year, everyone who visited brought him gifts of silver and gold, clothing, weapons, spices, horses, and mules. Solomon had 4,000 stalls for his horses and chariots, and he had 12,000 horses. He stationed some of them in the chariot cities and some near him in Jerusalem. He ruled over all the kings from the Euphrates River in the north to the land of the Philistines and the border of Egypt in the south. The king made silver as plentiful in Jerusalem as stone, and valuable cedar timber was as common as the sycamore fig trees that grow in the foothills of Judah. Solomon's horses were imported from Egypt and many other countries. Summary of Solomon's Reign, 2 Chronicles 1 14 through 17. Solomon built up a huge force of chariots and horses. He had 1,400 chariots and 12,000 horses. He stationed some of them in the chariot cities and some near him in Jerusalem. The king made silver and gold as plentiful in Jerusalem as stone, and valuable cedar timber was as common as the sycamore fig trees that grow in the foothills of Judah. Solomon's horses were imported from Egypt and from Cilicia. The king's traders acquired them from Cilicia at the standard price. At that time, chariots from Egypt could be purchased for 600 pieces of silver and horses for 150 pieces of silver. They were then exported to the kings of the Hittites and the kings of Aram. Hi there, and welcome to New Hope Reads. I'm Mark Roof. And we are delighted that you've joined us to share in the reading of God's Word. Very important that we share this together and be in God's Word daily. And by the way, we'd like to invite you to join us here at New Hope Church of Christ anytime you get a chance. Sunday mornings, we have classes at 930. We have worship at 1030. And you can join us live or online. Have a blessed day.